I received a question in the email. I think it was a really good question, so I wanted to make a very quick video response about it. Um, it says, what's the meaning of your chain? Who do you contribute your success of FMK? Um, does the chain represent your humbleness in the martial arts or FMK? Um, basically, I'm going to answer each question. So what's the meaning of the chain? Um, it's actually not the chain that has the most meaning, but it's actually this right here. Um, this is... In the Chinese, they call him Guangdong, um, but then I ended up finding out that his name is actually Guan Yu as well. He goes by Guan Yu as well. That's his name, and then they call him Guangdong, Guan Gong. Um, so this is how it looks. He's he's basically a martial artist, um, a real soldier that actually lived. I didn't know the history about him. I didn't know anything about him. But my mom was the one who got me this. When I opened my business, she got me this. And then I wore it a few times, but I didn't like to wear any type of jewelry at the time. So I stopped wearing it. And I just kind of had it at the school. I think I dropped it. And it chipped a little bit. And then I think I almost even lost it. But when I did wear it, some you know there was people that were saying that it was really nice, and I didn't know the value of it because this is actually like real jade, and she got <laughs> it's um a special jade that it's hard to find because this type of color it has two different colors in it, and if you put it in the, in the light, you'll find a, a third color inside of it. So she was saying that it's a special jade, and I don't even know how much she paid for it, but um is actually like very expensive she said you know but I didn't know the value of it I didn't know how to appreciate it I even almost lost it but I kept it at the school okay and then she ended up getting me a statue of the same person but in the statue it's called like Guangdong or Guanggong like one of those and then I found out his name's Guan Yu and then she said to put that at my business because it'll bring good luck okay and then I found another one at a, at a store in Chinatown that I really liked the way it looked. So I bought that statue as well. So I got two of the statues at the school, um, right by the entrance. And then I got this one as well around my neck. Um, basically, this is something where you'll find in a lot of Chinese businesses. You'll find it in the restaurants. You'll find in all sorts of Chinese businesses where they'll have this this. Guangdong, like pretty much at by the entrance, like protecting the business, and they're saying like it's supposed to protect the business and bring good fortune, bring good luck, kind of like ward off like evil spirits and things like that. So I didn't know the history of it. I didn't know what it really meant. Um, all I knew was what my mom was telling me, and what she gave to me to kind of bring luck to my business. But not too long ago, maybe about a couple months ago, I have a close high school friend who texted me and he said, do you know who Guan Yu is? I said, no. And then he said, look him up. So I looked him up. I read up on him in Wikipedia. So it's G-U-A-N, Guan, and then Yu, Y-U. I read up on him and then it turns out what I was reading was the same person, the same person that my mom, this is the guy, and then the statues is the guy. And it really surprised me. It's like, oh, you know, I didn't know that, you know, that this guy was a real person. So basically, this was a, this was a real soldier that he really lived. And um, he's known to be, like, very loyal. He's known to be upholding integrity, um, basically, like, truthfulness and... Um, He's somebody that basically just doesn't, he's not a fake person, like, he's a real, real person, like, like, he's loyal, you know, and, um, he's not a sellout, basically, like, he pretty much put his life on the line for, like, what's right, you know, and even, um, based on his life, even a lot of police departments in China would have, um, you know, statues of him and just, like, shrines of him to to basically protect the, the, the police department you know because the the values that he stood up for so 
you can read up on it on your own, but basically what he ended up doing, um, he, he made a pact with like two of his friends that like they would always be together and, and um, defend each other and be there for each other. And then they went into war and then he ended up getting captured by the enemies. The enemies captured him and then um, they forced him to pretty much fight on their side. But then he made an agreement and said, you know what, I'll fight for you. But when I'm done doing what I need to do, I'm going to go back to my friends. And that's exactly what he did. You know, um, the enemy, the enemy's really, um, the enemy, like, um, head, head person basically really respected him. And, um, you know, he knew he was a great soldier and then he ended up, um, doing what he needed to do and then he went back with his friends and started fighting with his friends again um, and then basically you know he, he he was like the real martial artist like he was actually in the battlefield and he was like one of the best they made a movie about him too he's in the movie portrayed in the movie the movie's called Red Cliff if you watch the movie um, he's portrayed in that movie as well um, but he he won like many battles, you know, and he even fought like side by side with his son to death, you know, where they ended up like dying together pretty much. And like um, the values that he stood up for were like, you know, he wouldn't stop fighting for those values. So basically, um, when I read that, it really inspired me to be like, hey, you know, this is what I want to be within me, you know. This is a, what I want to represent within me. I want to represent what he was representing. I wanted his spirit to be a part of me, and I was really excited to have somebody else that I could look towards and um, draw positive energy from, other than Bruce Lee. You know, this person was the real martial artist, like the real soldiers on the battlefield, like killing people. You know, for for a certain just cause and. Um, Preventing himself from being killed, and he was a real general, a real soldier. Bruce Lee was an actor, you know, martial artist, but this person was a martial artist and a real soldier, you know. So, like, this person is basically as significant, if not more significant, than Bruce Lee. Um, this person ended up getting so much attention and fame and so much recognition and respect from the people that um, there's people all over China ended up worshiping him and um, you know he's all over the restaurants they have statues all over with them the police departments have statues of them um, all of China you know started like worshiping this person um, even Buddhists even Taoists everybody respected him and um, he ended up be, becoming turned. In, he ended up being turned into a god. So that's pretty much he. He reached god status in the Chinese culture, and um, the Chinese are known for like great respect towards like living people. So you got somebody like here, like this person Guan Yu. You got Confucius. You got Lao Tzu. You got Buddha. These are like real people that were living and through the things that they have um, accomplished and represented during their life, they gained so much respect from the people that they ended up putting them, like, they ended up starting to worship these 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 people and almost turned them into gods. So this person has been turned into a god in the Chinese culture, and um, he's there pretty much for good luck to protect the business. You know, like, he's like a soldier that's protecting. So it's like he's almost, like, representing, like, protecting like the evil spirits from the business you know and he's he's like it's almost like having armed security with you at all times it's like say a police officer is like always at your door protecting your business you know and then you're supposed to put him by the door to protect the business you know um so when i found out more about this guy and then what I when I read that his that this stuff was all true, and what he was representing and and what he stood for, it really 
got me to to really want to embrace that. So, and another thing is my mom already gave me this as a gift, and she even got me the statue as a gift, and she knew that you know this would protect my business, and she bought it for me. But I didn't know how to appreciate it back then. But now I really do appreciate it. I feel that you know this is a, somebody that I want to resemble, you know, and I want to look up to and make a part of me, you know. Um, so I ended up starting to wear this as soon as my friend told me about it, and then I started reading up on it, and I found out about the real history. I ended up starting to wear this. So what ended up happening was I was wearing it, you know, and then people are telling me, yeah, I really like that, it's really cool, you know, I said, yeah, you know, it's all, you know, it brings good luck, and then, and then people like, one of my students is like, Did, do you, are you having good luck now? I'm like, yeah, you know, um, but then what ended up happening is I was wearing it, and then mysteriously, out of nowhere, um, the FMK YouTube came back, you know, and um, that just, May reinforce it even more of how, like, man, you know, maybe this is, is a sign, you know, maybe he is protecting my business, you know, because for me to, to be, get away from the YouTube for over a year, and then I put this thing on, and then all of a sudden, like a week later, my YouTube comes back out of nowhere, I'm like, man, you know, the spirits are with me, you know, this person's spirit's with me. You know, so I, I, I'm not like a superstitious person, but I do believe in positive energy, you know, and I believe in like feng shui and your environments and um, the energy levels around you and how it can bring positive, top positivity towards you. So when I have good energy around me, then good things could happen, you know, so like what type of uh, furniture that I have, what type of ornaments, what type of paintings, what type of decorations, like it all matters, what colors that I use. Um, and for these people, you know, having the Bruce Lee pictures reminds me, hey, you know, I want to live up to what he was representing and I want his spirit to be with me. So you see like Bruce Lee pictures, around my school and this person you know I want his spirit to be around me so I always want to carry, <coughs> carry it with me always have it on me and um, <coughs> even on the entrance of my business I got his statues there um, I got some Buddha statues as well and some Buddha um, posters I want his energy with me too I got Lao Tzu's book in my my coon and I got a lot of other books in there um, and I just want to bring good energy around me, you know, and like it was just exciting to find somebody else that I could really embrace. Especially another thing is that he's in deeply ingrained in the Chinese culture, you know, because I'm inspired by like somebody like Tupac too, but he's not a part of the Chinese culture, but I'm inspired by him. But Bruce Lee was like the only one that I really look towards for great inspiration and it's just it's um it's unfortunate that there's not that many other ch famous chinese people that i could look towards for you know good fortune or guidance or just positive and drawing positive energy from but when i found out about this guy i was excited you know like hey you know this person is like representing exactly what what I want to represent in the martial arts. I want to stand for truth, you know, to death, you know. And um, I want to represent, I want to be loyal to to the way of the martial arts. I want to be, like, I really want to basically represent martial arts to the fullest, you know. And I feel that this person was the one that was really doing it in real life, you know, and um, him and Bruce Lee are like a huge part of like my um, 
the positive energy that I want to feed off of. So I ended up, you know, starting to wear this, and then I ended up replacing because when my mom got it for me, it had a um, rope, brown rope, and I just recently repla replaced the brown rope with the gold chain, you know, to just basically, you know, liven it up a little bit so it stands out more and just basically, you know, give them a, a better, you know, better home or something like that, you know, so... So I plan to be wearing this all the time, every day, and just bringing good luck to the business, you know. So that's that. Um, what do you contribute your success of FMK? I mean, I was thinking about that actually today, you know, when I was walking, and I was like, you know, the biggest part of my success in FMK, I would say, would be my wife. You know, Jenny, um, there wouldn't really be an FMK if it wasn't for her. And, like, she's the one who really put all the effort into opening up the business. Because originally we had a restaurant, and that, a restaurant business, and FMK was just basically a small little studio within that restaurant that I was teaching out of. And she's the one who put all the effort into... Um, getting it established, the whole business, the whole restaurant business, and um, there's no way I would have been able to do that. You know, we had to renovate everything from the ground up, and she was dealing with the city and the inspections and everything, permits, and um, getting loans, and there's no way that I wouldn't be able to do all that. No way. You know, and she did all that, you know, and then basically just got everything established, everything there, and then... Um, the restaurant ended up not working out the way that working out the way that we planned, and then um, we ended up having our fifth child, and then my my training ended up becoming more successful than the restaurant, so we ended up uh, you know closing down the restaurant and just converting the whole place into the martial arts school, and um, then I've been operating it that way ever since. Um, She's the one, the main caretaker of my children, and because she's home with them all day, every day, it allows me the freedom to 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 have an unrestricted schedule, so I can train people at any time of the day, and um, you know, she's the one that does all the taxes for the business and all the accounting. So, she's even the one that came up with the label Freddy's Modern Kung Fu, you know. It was in 2009, and I didn't know what to call my art. I just didn't know what to call it, you know. I mean, I was thinking, like, Freddy's Kung Fu or Freddy Lee's Kung Fu, but she ended up coming up with the catchy um, title of Freddy's Modern Kung Fu, and I really liked that title, and then I went with it. And then I established a YouTube channel in December 2009 as soon as she helped come up with that title. And, um... You know, she's a big part of why FMK is where it's at. Um, another person that's a huge part of the success of FMK is um, is my father, you know, and my mother, you know. My father and my mother, you know, just supporting me, um, helping me financially, um, helping with my, my children, you know, just basically being there for me, you know, when I need them, you know. Um, FMK has been going through sometimes we've we've gone through some financial struggles and because of my parents they've been able to kind of help us through those financial struggles um, you know they're, they're always supportive of the business you know another thing that I would contribute to the success of FMK I would say is YouTube you know before I opened up my physical location of my school, um, the YouTube was my primary area of uh, expressing myself like as an artist. And um, I gained a lot of support from the people there. And they gave me a lot of positive energy that really fed into my development as a, as a human being and as an, as an artist. And that energy really was important for me, you know, and... Um, 
it's unfortunate that the energy turned negative when I went in the route of going too deep into criticizing combat sport. Um, I ended up attracting a lot of negativity towards me and then it ended up overtaking the entire thing and essentially shutting it down. And then um, that was a huge setback and I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, I pretty much assumed that I was never going to be able to come back. And now that I'm back, I'm still not um, taking it for granted. I'm still not assuming that I'll always be here. Um, I'm almost prepared that one day it will shut down again and I have to be, I need, I need to be aware of that and um, just prepare, prepare to handle that again. But those would be like the three main things I'd say, you know, um, my parents, my wife, YouTube, you know, of course, you know, my students and my clients, you know, they uh, contribute a lot <coughs> as far as like funding the business and, you know, basically um, helping to market word of mouth, you know, social media, you know, um, is very important. But, you know, I think, not that I think I know there's a long way to go, you know what I mean? Like, uh, there's a long way to go. There just is, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, I really feel that, that I need to grow, you know, I need to grow. The business needs to grow. I need to grow as a teacher. I need to grow as an artist. And I really want to take this this expression to the highest level that I can, you know. And I want to be in the position where I can give other people opportunities. One day. I want to be in a position where I can live comfortable. And not worry, you know, not have to worry too much about what's going to happen in the future. You know, um, so it's been about since 2010 that I've been uh, running this business, this school. And so it's almost about six years. And there's no guarantees. You never know, this business, you never know what's going to happen. I mean... One month is going great, another month is going horrible, and it just goes back and forth. And a lot of it has to deal with like me properly managing the be the business in order to um, keep it alive. You know, if I don't manage it properly, it can shut down. So, as I stated, you know, the YouTube shutdown was a huge like drawback. A huge challenge um, and now I just want to make things right I want to make peace with everybody out there and do things the right way you know I just want to leave the people alone not criticize anybody and just do my own thing and just wish for success hope for success and um, like I said there's still a very long way to go and I just hope to grow, you know. Um, does the chain represent your humbleness in the martial arts? Um, the chain is mainly representing like loyalty, integrity, truth, and you know, like standing up for for like the true way, you know. Um, is representing strength, is representing like, like this person was the realest martial artist, like out there ever, you know, that's, that's become like world, worldly, you know, obtained like recognition and fame that's known by so many people. Um, this was like basically, Basically, Bruce Lee's and what he was representing was nothing in comparison to what this guy was representing. I mean, this guy got turned into a god. Bruce Lee was great, but 
Bruce Lee is not turned into a god by the Chinese culture. You know, Bruce Lee is, is a big part of the culture. Um, but the, he's nothing in comparison to this guy. You know, so um, he's representing the real martial arts. Like, for real, for real. You know, and... And, um... Basically... Having him close to me, close to my heart, um, and protecting my business, is is I want that energy to be a part of me. I want to have more strength, cause I felt, <laughs> especially without him, I felt like the whole world was against me. You know, like I have supporters out there, but they're 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 all hidden. Like most of all my supporters are hidden. Like, they'll watch my videos, but they're not, you know, they're not, like, with me, you know, fighting with me. If, you know, it seems like, you know, I was out there by myself, and then all these combat sport people started converging on me to destroy me, and I felt alone, you know. Um, but having this person by my side, you know, and um, Bruce Lee by my side, it gives me strength and Osho like these are the people that I look to towards for strength you know Osho, Bruce Lee, Guan Yu, um, Tupac I look at all these real individuals the real people that's lived I look towards them for strength and um, and that's what they're representing towards for me you know Guan Yu's representing like strength and power and standing up for what's right you know, that's what he was all about. He's like standing up for what's right. That's why the police look up to him, because he would stand up for what's right. You know, and um, that's how I've been. Even before the YouTube. And, you know, when I was a police officer, the reason why I got, you know, wrongfully terminated was because I stood up for what's right. I stood up against racism, because I knew that racism is not right. And then they ended up wrongfully terminating me. You know, and then I get on YouTube and then I stand up for what's right. You know, I stand up against, you know, violence. I stand up against violence in the cage, in the ring, you know, and then they booted me out. Um, and now that I'm back, I just got to realize that, hey, you know, I'm still holding up to my true values, but I just have to approach it in a more professional way. I just have to be more careful what I say and um, be less offensive, you know, and just more calm, more at peace, more humble, um, less aggressive, you know, just that's what I gotta do. That's the only way that I'm gonna be able to um, even be allowed to be on here, you know, so, but that's it, you know, um, that's the meaning of this guy right here, and, um, it was a great question, I really, I really like the question, because, you know, these things are important, you know, and I think, and I was thinking about it too, you know, it's like, I'm not all about the I'm not about the wedding rings and all that stuff, but now I can start to understand why people value those things because they're like, hey, you know, I always want to remember my loved one and keep them close to me, and like I could see like how something that you make a part of you can really uplift you, you know. So like this right here wearing it kind of gives me that strength to remember like hey you know like I'm not by myself you know I could uh stand strong these people up there they're with me like Tupac I mean like Bruce Lee they might be dead physically but their spirit I feel is with me like they're like hey you know we're gonna protect you you know this guy right here the Guan Yu he's like you know I'm with you. I'm going to protect you. Everything's going to be good. Um, same thing with Osho. He's like, hey, I'm with you. I'm going to protect you. Everything's going to be good. And I think in, in 
Western culture, they look towards God for that. You know, that's why they wear the crosses, they wear the, you know, Jesus Christ and everything, because they're like, hey, you know, God's going to protect you, everything's going to be good, you know. Um, and these symbols, I think, are significant. Sometimes it's hard to explain it scientifically, but these symbols are significant. Like, every book you read, every song you listen to, every movie you watch, the colors that you wear, the decorations that you choose to have, the air that you breathe, the food that you eat, everything matters. You know, everything. So we need to be very aware of our surroundings, you know, and everything that we make a part of our lives. We got to be aware of all of that so then we could bring positive energy with it, you know, to our lives. And with that positive energy, hopefully that will convert into success. You know, so this person said, you know, what would you contribute to your success? I mean, I don't even consider it success. If anything, you know, I'm not going to say it's a failure, but I'll say that it's not nearly where it needs to be. You know, it's like me being satisfied with doing like five pull-ups. Like, no, five is just... It's okay, but no, I got to do 50, I got to do 100, whatever, you know, like FMK is where it's at now, but no, you know, it needs to get, it needs to build, you know, right now around 10 million views, it needs to be like hundreds of millions of views, you know, that I need, you know, um, that's where it needs to be. And I know that the possibility is possible. And I know that there's a potential. And that's all I need in order to keep going. You know, I just want to move forward. I want to stay positive. I want to let go of the negative energy that, that, that you know, of the past. I want to make peace with the people out there. People that don't like me, I hope and I wish for them to just leave me alone and I'm not going to bother them, you know, anymore. I'm just going to focus on my own development and that's it. So, that's it.